And now, on with the show. What, what comes to mind when someone talks about Africa? When someone mentions Africa? I've had poverty, war, big fat smile. We have big fat smiles. I'd also like to add my own. Uh, you've all seen the, the image. It's a, it's, it's a famous image of uh, you know, uh, a boy or girl, uh, hunger stricken, hands stretched out in a begging pose. Now, I also want to ask you, what 10 good things can you think about Africa? Whether the people Beautiful climate. Fresh food. Oh, fresh food, yes. Now, yes. I bring this up because I want to tell you about African solutions, about building solutions that work for Africa. And what the simple exercise that we just did uh, affirms what uh, Chimamanda Adichie talks of in her TED talk, The Danger of a Single Story. She speaks of being cast upon a singular, sealed identity, of being known as only one thing and nothing else. In effect, excluding all possibility of variety and change. Now, sadly, this narrative permeates to our daily lives in our workplaces, at our homes, in our businesses. Come to think of it, I, I, I run two companies, and um, uh, I own two companies. And all the other companies that I know, most of them, use software that is made from India, <coughs> from China, and if, 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 even the maintenance is outsourced. Our roads are mainly built Large, they are largely built by foreign contractors. And one has to wonder, does that mean that we do not have solutions for those problems here? Or worse, that we have solutions that are good enough, but we do not believe in them. And therefore, we do not believe in our own problem-solving skills. My journey for the past four years has proven to me that we can rewrite this narrative. You've all been at that fork in your life uh, where you either go left or you go right. And for me, it was in 2009, I made the decision to quit uh, my path to becoming a doctor and decided to pursue a career in IT. Uh, basically because I felt the fundamental there's a clash in our fundamental ideologies. But also, perhaps foolishly, because I read um, Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. Its last three words summarize that for me. They read, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And, it indeed has made a difference. Two years after leaving the path to becoming a doctor, I was at Macquarie. I was, a, like Steve Jobs said, foolish and hungry to change the world. I had these skills, I had this passion to build something, anything. So I created a team to participate in the Imagine Cup. It's a worldwide student competition that tasks students to build solutions to the world's toughest problems. Now, of course, at the time, you know, we were new to this thing and uh, you know, we kept on thinking, oh, but there are the Americans, there are the Chinese, there are people from Taiwan, these guys do these things every day. But we felt different. My team and I shared a belief, a belief that only the best can be for Africa one, and only the best can come out of Africa. But perhaps more important that we could build something that would affect our society. 
So we looked at what challenges to face and we looked at Millennium Development Goals 4 and 5. 4 is uh, uh, reducing infant mortality, 5 is improving maternal health. And these two spoke to us deeply. Because to impact community, like we thought we would want to impact community, we wanted to look, we wanted to find that one cornerstone that so, so like a domino effect that when you remove this, all the other pieces fall into place. And we found that in all communities, especially in Africa, the mother and by extension women are a cornerstone in our communities. Their impact, their role directly or indirectly in education, in economic development, in health cannot be an, an underestimated. So we knew that if we built something that would solve a fundamental problem for women, the rest of the MDGs somehow start lining up, like a butterfly effect. But in order to do this, we had to first find out what problems were facing women. And what we found was sad as it was shocking, especially regarding maternal health. Every minute, a mother dies from pregnancy or childbirth related complications. Now, 99%, 99% of these deaths are recorded in Sub Saharan Africa. Now, this these, these are complications that are largely preventable or treatable if only they are diagnosed early. But you see, that is not the case. Few of our mothers go for the four minimum recommended antenatal care visits. In fact, on average, less, uh, less than 40% go for these visits, which means that 60% of the mothers miss out on the benefits of early diagnosis and potentially life-saving interventions. So we decided to build something to change this, to change the course of events, and we targeted midwives. Midwives are an interesting player in this sector. They are the superheroes at the forefront of this fight. They are the warriors, fearless and honorable, at the battle's forefront. And we knew that improving their job they are working anyway, would go a long way in turning the tide in this particular fight. So we built Winsenga. Winsenga is a mobile antenatal diagnosis tool. It's low cost and it's quality. The primary tool of trade is this pin at home. It has been around for over 100 years. It does its job and it's also cheap. The problem is that its accuracy depends almost entirely on the experience of a midwife. I have had the chance to try to listen in with this, and if you don't have a trained ear, you hear nothing. Now, we, we have rural areas with facilities that have less experienced midwives because the experienced ones went for the proverbial green pastures. You have a problem. So we took that was more with a prototype and change just something small. William Golding says in The Lord of the Flies that the greatest ideas are the simplest. When you look at what we actually built, it's fundamentally quite simple. The answer has always been there. Now with Win Sanger, instead of instead of the midwife, midwife leaning in to listen, all she has to do is pull this out. Wish I had a prop. Pull this out, plug into a mobile phone, place, and tap. Now, this way, even the inexperienced midwife is going to be able to carry out the proper diagnosis because the rest, the tedious job of trying to listen into the heartbeats and calculate the beats per minute using her watch is now taken over by software, intuitive software. So when saying I will be able to pick the, the baby's habits, it will analyze them, it will diagnose and it will alert the midwife, say, 
uh, when you have 180 beats per minute and the mother is in her, uh, her first trimester or second trimester and that is not very good. But it goes beyond that. Because there, there, there are courses of action sent out when you've gotten this through ABCD or alert the doctor. Which send off other summarizes the results of the diagnosis that can be SMS to the mother. This way, the mother can keep track, can keep her own antenatal care visit records on her phone, as opposed to having them in the book that she is more likely to lose. Yeah. Lastly, and this is the most important thing about when saying that because it's mobile, we can change the story. Instead of the mother having to walk long distances to an ill-equipped health facility, we can bring the health care to her through initiatives from government or uh, UNICEF's Family Health Days. This, this journey has taken us places. It has taken me places anyway. We, we represented Africa at the Worldwide Finals of the Imagine Cup, and we ranked in the top 10. Mind you, um, mind you we were not able to travel to Australia because uh, our visas were cancelled for hours to our flight. So we had to present um, via, it's called Link, but most people understand Skype. So, well, according to the visa office, our degrees were not good enough reason for us to come back to Uganda. Uh, but still, we were, able to, we were able to make that top 10. We beat very, some very notable countries in here. I wanted to say US, China, uh -huh. Germany. Yeah, but for me, this journey is not really about, about what you build or what it can potentially, it can potentially do for, for lives. It's about a solution that's built in Africa to solve African problems. And for me, three things summarize this journey. Passion, love in Africa. Passion is the thing that's going to drive you, it's going to fuel you when you're hitting walls, when you can't pay your rent, when well, you need to go to a tailor every now and then because the trousers will, 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 will they longer fit you, when you just want to give up. Love. A love for community. A love for not only the community but their problems also because when you love their problems you find solutions for them as for africa it's a new narrative that must be written you see we are at a unique point in our lives as africans youth like myself have the skills that those before us have to travel in post-colonial days to get from abroad now thanks to the internet I can get the very same skill set that someone in the US or someone in the UK has. But then what? I have the skills, then do what? Think about Africa. When, when we have the skills and we have the passion and we have the love for Africa, very little can stand devoured. And we can build this. We just need to believe that we can do it. I don't think I'm unique, honestly. I just think I am just like very many African youth, except that I have this belief that if they can do it, I can do it. But I can also not do this alone. I think that each one of us can contribute in their small way, no matter how little. After all, what is a leg but a multitude of drops? There's a, there's, there's a saying in my language, and this is, uh, I bring this up because I'm talking about the, the diaspora. They say in my language that, that says, Lot makama bo, a god will. Loosely translated, it means a stick that is out of which cannot be the snake that's about to bite you. So whereas those of us in the diaspora can help in the various ways that that, that, that we help. I believe we have to be on the ground. We have to have hands physically, literally, on deck to move the ship forward. 
Now, in building these 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 solutions, we also need to embrace a certain set of beliefs, a framework. And the Maker Fire Manifesto, for me, embodies these these beliefs. The Maker Maker Fire is a Pan African annual gallery of African inventors to showcase African ingenuity. And their, manif their 10 point manifesto is what I think every problem solver in Africa must read. Allow me to share some of them with you. We will build and make the things Africa needs. We will see challenges as opportunities to invent. Yes. We will wait for no one. And we will remake Africa with our own hands. Yes. Thank you.